Hello and welcome to Between Sets with Church. Today we are in the barracks and rehearsal space of our very own Flight 97. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Hey, guys. Thanks for coming by. <laughs> we finally did it. <laughs> we did it. We did it. <laughs> we, uh, we joked around earlier because we've had uh, snowstorms. We've had yeah. gear f fall apart. Yeah. Anyway, we, we're here. We, we we're finally it. made it. <laughs> so tell me a little bit more about um, the beginnings of, of Flight 97. How uh, did this all start? Really, it started as a solo project about eight years ago. And then uh, it just kind of snowballed, and it's been going ever since. And I don't know, once I met Brennan, it was like I had a drummer. I never really anticipated on getting another band going, but it just kind of worked out. And then we've been through a, we've been through a lot together over the last, I guess, six years now. Yeah. Six, seven years we've been doing this together. So. Yeah. Because you were, you were doing a lot of solo stuff prior to this. Yeah, I did a lot of solo stuff. I actually did a West Coast tour on my That's own. That's right, yeah. When I first named it Flight 97, and yeah. I guess we'll get it out of the way right now. The 97 is kind of like just a number for hope. It's just kind of Flight 97, nothing to do with 9-11. So you weren't we, stuck on a tour back with time. Flight 97. No, no, you missed nothing, that. Your nothing, parents nothing, are waving to you. Nothing crazy no, like okay. that. Home Alone. No. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, Home Alone. <laughs> no, it was just a name that I threw out there, and then it just kind of stuck. And then, I don't know, we've been through a lot with it. I've definitely, we've thought a lot about changing the name and different ideas, but I don't know, I just kind of been through a lot with it, so we're still going with Flight 97, still, yeah. still taking off, right? Yeah. It works, it works, so, right? Yeah. 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 Um, so how does the transition going from solo into uh, into the band thing? Uh, it happened slowly, really. Like, I, it was, the hardest was just like, I'm not the best guitar player, and I know that, but then jamming with a drummer like Brennan, who's a metal drummer, it was like, we went through a lot, we had a lot of bumping heads, and but it just like he's a, he likes his double bass and I like my country chords. And yeah. I don't know. We've just kind of always made them work at the end of the day. It's always been a, a battle, but I think that we're very proud of every song that we've ever done and how they've all turned out. So. Well, that's kind of a cool thing, too, to bring all these different elements and, oh, and yeah. styles yeah. And, and kind of bringing it down and yeah. kind of funneling it into well, now one we've got final Mikey, product. Right? So we got keyboards now. You got bass, now, keyboards, now and everything going on here. Yeah, like yeah. he grew up on something like Bruce Springsteen and yeah. stuff like that, and I grew up on stuff like thrice and limp biscuit and lincoln park and stuff like that slipknot and all this stuff and just all of our stylistic attributes kind of contribute to our sound i think yeah 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 do you do you find it difficult to to do that is is one style overpowering the other like you're saying the double kick and, and oh, all we, that we, stuff we, yeah, kind we of hit, balance it we out. hit barriers all the time yeah. where it's like where are we going to go with this and it's like it's normally me getting mad around like yo like too much, too much, you know? But at the end of the day, sometimes that too much is what I needed. It's that kick that I really didn't need. And when you listen to it, it's like, okay, you're right. Like, we can boost this one up a little bit more. And yeah, I don't know, yeah. it's, uh, we definitely, we work well together. That's yeah, sure. good, good. <laughs> Thank you. 
piece of fresh shit. He had you, no prescription. Sit up, change, get DK from the choices that he made. Still a slave to this day, life will never be the same. It all just got the best of me. So obviously you guys have a background. It's not as if you're new to the scene either. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about where, where you were from and where you came, uh, how you got here and background in music? Yeah, so uh, I, I started playing, or I was playing in a metal band a while ago on bass and then I hadn't been playing bass for a while. I started uh, doing keyboards for a, uh, for a cover band, uh, Hitsy Fits, and then uh, that's where uh, I met Brennan and then uh, eventually we started jamming down here and got to know Adam a little bit better and before long we were just jamming and after a while, we decided to just make it a thing, and here we are. Nice, nice. Do it. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was in a band a long time ago called Ten Dead Poets, and we kind of played at the mansion, a bunch of places around, and then I met a guy named uh, Steve Dunford, and he was one of my best friends back then, and we kind of had a cover band called Semi-Final Set List, and we used to play at the Sticks and, you know... Ruans and all those places that we used to Ruans. have that are unfortunately gone now. Um, and it, it was just one day I was out with the Buds and I came out of the, the bar and there was Adam yeah, on the street and, yeah. and he was, I just think, asking doing for the change. same thing. <laughs> yeah, he was thanking for change. Got a cigarette, man. I gave him some change and I said, I'm a drummer. And, and he said, well, maybe we can make some music. And nice. Yeah. Cool, cool. And with that change, we... We made the change. Yeah, sure. yeah. We, we bought some yeah. musical <laughs> instruments. Nice. Now, how did that change go from you, especially doing solo stuff, into into dealing with this? Like, I shouldn't say dealing with it, but writing and and putting all this together was it was it a huge jump? Like, it was gradual. Like okay. it was more or less. We just like like I said. We've had a lot of members in this band. Like we've worked, I'm gonna say like at least 25 people have some kind of thumbprint on Flight 97. That's not bad. Like it's a lot. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, you can yeah. <laughs> it's good and it's bad, you know. Like they haven't all left on the best terms, but yeah. uh, I was being a little sarcastic uh, there. Yeah, so was I. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think at the end of the day, it was like we've learned something from everybody that we've ever jammed with. Like you'll never lose jamming with somebody. You know what I mean? It may not turn into the best relationship or the best, you know, you're not going to be in a band together forever, but you take it with a grain of salt and you always learn from playing with other musicians, you know, yeah. like there was one time Brennan wanted to try out for, I don't, it was like some kind of cover, like metal band or something, Alexis on fire or something. Oh. And he was like worried to tell me and he's like, are you gonna be mad if I play another band? I'm like, dude, do it. Like, play as much as you possibly can. Like, go. Like, play. Just don't miss any shows. Or... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's just working with other people and getting different aspects of, like, how they write. You're always gonna walk away with knowledge yeah. at the end yeah. of the day. That's yeah. all that really yeah. matters. Right? At the yeah. end so. of the day, lots of people have a thumbprint on Flight 97. Yeah. And we wouldn't change it for anything. And we've always learned from those people that were a part of yeah. the project, yeah. Cool, cool. Speaking of writing, do you, when you write, do you guys do it as a democratic system? And do you work a lot around the, the keyboards? Yeah, well, I mean, when I start, first started jamming with Adam, he'd kind of come, uh, come up with some new ideas. And then as time went by, we just kept on working on them. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can make things more and more collaborati collaboratively as we can. And, uh, yeah, I'd love to see it go that direction. Yeah. 
Yeah. Looking, well, looking forward to the keys. Looking yeah, forward to yeah. Keys. Well, certainly yeah. that's a huge element, yeah. and it's, like I said yeah. before, it's really unlimited as to where you can go with that. It that's is for really, sure. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. too. And I, as we were talking earlier before, it's, I'm sure it's, or you were saying, too, actually, it's much easier to work with with three people than it is with with four or five yeah and you... like we we do plan on having like you know phil and guitar player maybe we were talking about maybe getting another bass player and mikey focus more on keys and guitar and like we have so many options with it but at the end of the day having more than three people really it's a lot you know and people have lives they have families they have work and i think like my biggest thing maybe i'm just getting older and more bitter but the less people i have to work with and deal with the easier it is to maintain sanity and <laughs> Imagine get things slip, done. Imagine not having like nine people you have to coordinate <laughs> yeah. for jam practice. Yeah, that'd be tough. And then you got yeah. snowstorms and bass <laughs> gear going yeah, exactly. too. And before yeah. you know it, nothing's happening. Yeah. Um, the uh, the Danny Attack tour you guys did that last yeah. fall. Tell me a little bit more about that tour. And that was a that was a big pinch me moment for you guys. Yeah, it was. I don't know. I was a big fan of Danny Attack for a long time. I know he did a a cover with Jen Fontina, who was in our video cliff diving. We were a huge fan of her, and when I saw them collaborate, I just started listening to Danny Attack a lot. And at some point, he put on social media like, "Where should I tour next?" And I commented on it, it was like, come back to Canada, just assuming that a guy like him had been to Canada before. And he actually personally messaged me back and he was like, I've never been to Canada. So it was just a, just a long very, shot, you just threw very, it out there. Yeah, and... like I think that he probably knew that I bought a couple of his, like I bought a CD and then I bought a t-shirt and stuff online like during COVID and whatnot. But yeah, it just turned into us talking back and forth and like, yeah, the build up to it, it was like kind of just came to me one day and he was like out of nowhere, he was like, hey, what about these like five dates if I came to Canada? And I was like, okay, like, I'm not going to say no. I have no idea what I'm going to do with them, but let's do it. And then, yeah, I don't know. Booking the venues is really hard because so many venues have closed and so many promoters are out of the game now. So, like, trying to figure that out, like, under the pressure of Danny Tax coming to Canada to tour with Flight 97, like, you know, at least, like, for a little bit. That was a lot, but it all worked out. We had so many amazing people work with us and help us out booking shows, and we did a really good run with him. Nice, nice. Any uh, memorable gigs out of, of those? Every one of them. Yeah, yeah they were all yeah. they were nice. all different well, that's, in their that's own good. way. I mean, me personally, I we did play in Muskoka, Graveners, my hometown, so things got a little wild there, which we all kind of knew. And it was like, I don't know, yeah. I think that was kind of the breaking point where Danny kind of got to know us, and we were all like, okay, like this is our third day together. Yeah. Like, we, we're here to have fun. Yeah. Like, you know, that's it. And yeah. yeah, I don't think you could have put very many more people in the Queens for our Barry show. So that was a really good day. Yeah. Um, First Barry show in two tons years. Of people, yeah. Uh, that was probably my favorite show if I were to pick any of them, but they were all great venues, great shows. Nice. Which what about yourself? Any? Oh, I mean, I definitely liked uh, playing down in London at the. Um, Social, that's social, social ball, ball, yeah, yeah, because yeah. they have bowling alleys. So it's really funny to be playing, uh, playing music, and then just having bowling yeah. bowling balls flying by you to the side. <laughs> the stage is huge did, did it throw you it off at all? Like the, the, not the, at the all, sounds no, or anything? No, no, the, no, the, the sound was phenomenal. Sound but great, yeah, the people stage. that run that place like highly recommend it. Like if yeah, you're in London cool. area, definitely go definitely check, it out. check it out. That yeah. sounds like yeah. a cool concept. Yeah, it was really cool. It's definitely the promoters were great. I could go play some video games, shoot around a bowling, and then go play a show. Yeah, so, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was a good night. What What would you say you took away from that? Um, looking up at Danny as a, a you know a peer or, or you know something that you'd, you'd look, obviously look up to. Was there Was there certain things that you learned from him and you took away that you can bring back to to this band and and learn from it and grow from that? I think just like how professional he was and how on his game he was. Like he's in a different country, a country he's never been to. And it was like, it didn't phase him. It was about the music. It was about everything sounding great. And just very laid back and wanting to meet people. His social media game was insane. Like, he documents everything and he gets it out there. And he's just there. And I, I don't know. I think that dude's got some big things coming. And who knows? Maybe uh, you'll see a little Flight 97 come to Florida this yeah, spring. Nice. You never know. But uh, you never know. Well, you're saying, too, he was a very <laughs> personable man as well so i mean that probably makes a, a big difference too it's Very easier to get along with people oh, yeah. who actually communicate yeah. with the other bands and yeah. Yeah. talk to you and let them know you're part of a yeah. part of a team the tour yeah. yeah yeah danny just uh it blew me away that danny from florida kind of reached out to this small canadian band up in, up 
from north of Toronto and wanted to do a couple of dates with them. And it was pretty cool. Um, his tour manager, James, he was unreal. Yeah, James uh, was... When we met him, he was like, I've listened to you guys for like two weeks straight. Like, you guys are unreal. And we were like, what? What did you just say? Yeah, um, he, he knew all of our songs, this guy. And he songs. just came to drive Danny yeah. and help with door Like, anywhere he could, the guy yeah. just helped out. Helped out yeah. And it was mm-hmm. like, yeah, for him to come here and like, this is a Flight 97. I was like, dude, we... Like, we have day jobs, or like, <laughs> but he knew every lyric. He knew everything about, wow. it, and he had so many questions. And I think that was the big spark. It was like it was just a ball of positivity that just kept rolling. And it sucked the last date saying goodbye. You know, it was like everybody was so positive. Yeah, and we were running a little snags here and there, which no you do. You know what I mean? And nobody, we just wanted to keep going. And then, yeah, it was uh, it was definitely an experience. Any talk of a return visit? Or you mentioned maybe going down to Florida. Yeah, there's some talk about maybe some yeah. some yeah. stuff maybe, in the future. You never know. Maybe but. he'll trade his uh, American money for some funny money one day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> and you left on the 13th. It's been a month to the day. Life's strange, to say the least. Not much different than if you stay. I said goodbye to another friend. Uh, recording. What's what's coming down the pipe with that? Is there anything going on? We actually just got to the studio. Uh, we went down to Hamilton and uh, recorded with Mike Julian. He's a singer from Rival Town. Great band. Great dudes that we've been buddies with for a while. And I don't, it's been a while since we've been in the studio and actually like sat down and never worked with Mike in a studio. And he was a new producer and it was. I felt like we were doing things backwards because we played these songs live during the Danny Attack tour, but we never had them recorded. So when people were coming up to us, you know, at the merch booth or whatever, and like, hey, that one song, like, where can I find that? It's not on your Spotify. It's like, yeah, we haven't recorded that yet. Like, half that set list isn't recorded. So we kind of went backwards in a weird way by just playing these songs. And then it was like, well, maybe we should record them. And I think picking Mike Julian was the best because he's the best idea we had yet he's just in his own little world when it comes to it he had a vision for these songs and he's more in my mind like a heavier producer okay you know what i mean like rival town's a heavier band than we are but uh we knew him personally and just after talking to him it just felt right and after we went in like we've gotten a few mixes back and i think we can all say like yeah he's we're pretty stoked everyone's with happy with the yeah. mixes yeah, yeah. Great work, work with it his mixes are sounding good yeah, yeah. i'm looking forward to hearing the final yeah nice. so, he's a gifted producer and and it's evident if you go check out rival town on yeah you know youtube or anything any of their tracks like 
he's such he's so good at what he does. So yeah. he definitely transferred that into working with us and he did his best. Yeah. It's going to sound different, that's for sure. It's yeah. not as we were going down a heavy route back in 2020 before COVID hit and everything, but uh this is like I, I have to say this is the album I always wanted to make. Like there's a lot of keys, you know, now it's like this Bruce Springsteen, Bob Seger kind of feel that I've yeah, always nice. kind of wanted to capture. But uh with yeah. a little bit of like the men zingers maybe or yeah. you know. Yeah, it's got a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um the the tracks that are on that are some of them older tracks that you had written years past or are they all brand new from the all of you guys? I writing? have to say that they're new, but there's definitely a lot of old lyrics and some of the structure I've carried from I think one of them, like the one that we're gonna be releasing, you were right, we actually played tonight for you. Um that song has meant a lot to me for a while. A lot of lyric changes in it and a lot of structure changes, but um yeah, I don't know, I'm pretty stoked on the way that he went with it, you know, like, when I came in, like, I went out for a smoke break, came back in, and he was playing this, like, organ vibe, and it was just, like, this Bruce Springsteen, like, and I didn't even mention Bruce Springsteen, I was like, okay, this is, like, this is it, this is exactly what I've always wanted to hear with Flight 97, so, I think, uh, I think we're in for a treat, we don't even know what we're getting yet, you know, it's one of those things, you walk in the studio, you give them the tools, and yeah. you hope to God that you come out with something good at the other end, but... From what we've heard, yeah, I'm uh, I'm pretty stoked on. And, and sorry, when when was that coming out again? In, in the we spring? don't really have a date oh, okay. yet. We're uh, we're definitely going to be doing a music video for that one. Like that's going to be the first single we put out. But we're in no rush with anything right now. I mean, just kind of see how she goes. And yeah. yeah, we're going to release a couple singles in the next. It's still couple months. still marinating. It's yeah, still marinating. there you go. That's a good word. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I like that word. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Um, the song Never Again, can you tell us a little bit more about the lyrics behind that? It was one of the songs that actually intrigued me. Yeah, a little bit. that's why I'm <laughs> we asking. get that a lot. It's definitely yeah. a favorite from our set list. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, good. It's, uh, well, then I wasn't too far off then. No, not at all. Yeah. yeah, we get that one a lot. It's actually still getting a little bit of airplay, which we're surprised with because the lack of shows and things that we've been really doing the last two years. But uh, yeah, Never Again, it was just, I don't, I really don't even know the mentality I was in when I wrote the lyrics for it. It was just kind of a story. But I think I was the most proud that it was like the first song I actually kind of wrote leads to. And then I just kind of put it together. And yeah, I don't know. A lot of people really dig that song. And it's awesome when we play it. And, you know, everybody chanting the never again and knowing that it's 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 hooky. And that's yeah. all I can really ask for is that the rest of the songs that we have the same kind of hook. But it's something to draw you in. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Oh, it definitely has that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Where do you think this band's going to be in, in a year's time? What, what's Not that you have you know, predicted any plans, but where, where do you foresee this band in, in, the, in one year? Like I said it before, I'll say it again, hopefully we're all still alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so too. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I really, I don't know. Like, I just, yeah. I, I see us putting out like, you know, a couple more singles and then just writing, really. Like, we spend a lot of time together and... Right now, it's a, that winter funk, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like we, nobody really has a drive, and we're not being hard on ourselves, ourselves about it. We're just kind of like, let's take the time. But I think when the spring comes and we go out back, you know, hang out and like breathe in fresh air, like, yeah, I think Mikey busting out the acoustic and the keyboard, and we sit down, I think we're going to come out with some really good stuff. Like, nice. I don't know. I think it's going to be more positive in a weird way like, yeah. than the past stuff has. You know, the past stuff's been pretty dark and angry but the way we've been writing is like i don't know we're uh, we're doing good yeah good well i was going to say too you know coming out of wait until the spring no rush for yeah. anything and and uh you know we're fortunate enough there we've got great support in the city of barry we yeah. mentioned you know we were talking earlier about jillian and a few other people that have really kept it and and Shane, people who have kept the scene rolling yeah. for for yeah. so long yeah no after the fox lounge yeah would barry definitely took a big hit and we all love Shane, but yeah, just he's living in Costa Rica now, living his yeah. best life. But luckily, we have somebody like Jillian to take over, and everybody knows she's the queen of booking Barry and booking Ontario, really. She's just so involved in helping wherever she can. And then, uh, yeah, no barriers. They're coming up big time, trying to bring back all ages shows, which I think is amazing. Yeah. So I think yeah. the future for Barry is looking yeah. pretty good, good. coming good. in the summer. <laughs> Something, but I still don't know what 
the best way to get a hold of you guys if someone wants to book you or our Facebook you? page or Instagram page um, yeah, yeah. Facebook Instagram we've got a band email we can uh, maybe give to you and you can leave in the description sure yeah we'll, or whatever. We'll whatever, yeah. Um, uh, we're getting on Twitter soon okay uh, I've been working on that, yeah. uh, kind of behind the scenes. I'm the worst when it comes to computers. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. worry, I'm not far behind you. <laughs> yeah. Social media, maybe yeah. someone that's better at social media could help us out one day. But yeah. um, <laughs> we'll give you our empties. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There's a start. Yeah, there's a start. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much. I had a great time, and I, like I said before, thank I'm so you, glad man. we were finally able yeah. to do this. It wasn't snowing outside, and everything's working fine indoors. So, yeah. oh, it's thank you so treat. much for doing this yeah, again. We really and, appreciate uh, it. Thanks. Yeah, no, you're very, very yeah, welcome. Thanks to Rogers, too, for your having pleasure. us. We really appreciate you coming in. Right. Thanks, gentlemen. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.